Good afternoon and welcome to the City Council meeting for the City of International Falls for Tuesday, July the 5th, 2016. I would ask all to please arise and pledge allegiance to the flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Ask the uh, city administrator to note the roll call with all members of the council present. Move to the agenda, and we have the uh, an addition to the agenda, and that's item number eight under new business uh, resolution to uh, consider banking and investment uh, relationship with Wells Fargo Advisors. Secondly, item number one under new business would be a deletion, and we would ask the Borderland Substance Abuse Court to uh, uh, come to the uh, budget review meeting on August the 2nd. With those two uh, changes, what is your pleasure with the uh, agenda? I'll move with the changes. Motion by Councilor Droba to adopt the agenda with the changes. Second. Second by Councilor Briggs. Discussion on the motion or the agenda? Question. Aye. 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 Vote yes. Motion is carried. Agenda is approved with the addition and the deletion. Is the item uh, is the approval of the minutes of the June 20th regular city council meeting? Move. Motion by Councillor Jackson to approve the minutes. Second. Second by Councillor Kaler. Discussion on the motion of the minutes. Question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion is carried. Minutes are approved. Thank you. We have the uh, claims and transfers. Under transfers, we have uh, two fund number 101, the general fund from fund number 812, the lodging tax fund, a transfer of $226.75. We have under accounts payable claims for the City of International Falls, $411,724.34. Airport Commission claims of $41,176.52. And Economic Development Authority claims of $661 dollars and fifty cents. Your pleasure with the transfer and the accounts payable claims. Move. Motion by Councillor Briggs to adopt the resolution approving the, uh, the transfer and the payment of the claims. Second, Second by Councillor Jackson. Discussion on the motion for the resolution. Question. Aye. 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 No vote yes. Motion is carried. Resolution is adopted and the transfers and payments are approved. Thank you. Anyone in the audience that wishes to approach the council on any item that's not on the agenda at this time? Please state your name and address. Thank you. Ashley Hall, 122 Park Avenue. Um, council members, Mayor Anderson, I think you guys know why I'm here to discuss 8th Street again. Um, I feel like we were probably in this spot about a year ago, talking about 8th Street, keeping it open, and we've come a long way. Um, you guys have done a lot for the rink. I don't want you to think that we're not acknowledging anything that's been done. You guys put the heating system in, you're doing the lights, you're doing the water, I mean, the wood, excuse me, <clears throat> the wood, everything's been great so far but the thing that needs to be done the most is the rink needs to be redone and last year if I'm not mistaken there was money put aside for the rink to be redone correct correct and I know I'll watch the video in the last meeting um, and I think I can speak for myself and the rest of volunteers when I say we're pretty much heartbroken that it feels like we're just back to square one um, so I'm asking you to maybe open up that discussion again and consider voting and replacing all the boards and I'm not I know that you mentioned Cary Park and I'm not discrediting Cary Park I know it needs to be done but this is a totally separate issue 8th Street is nothing like Cary Park and I, you're right it will never be it's a community place I mean this is where kids and families go 
and it has nothing to do with Cary Park. So can we just take that part of the discussion out of it and leave it at 8th Street? Thank you, Ashley. Uh, I would also uh, like to share with the council and uh, information that was uh, presented to me by Tom Doris and uh, Councillor Jacksaw had, had requested this information at a previous meeting and that uh, there was uh, 1,362 uh, individuals who had uh, come to Cary Park or to um, 8th Street Rink and, uh, and skated there, participated in activities there uh, through the uh, a little more than two months of time that, uh, uh, that the rink was open. So uh, I think 55 days of operation, they had uh, 1,362 skaters. And so uh, just wanted to make sure that that was responded to. To, uh, to discuss the issue uh, of 8th Street, we would need a motion to reconsider the previous action by the council. And under Robert's rules of order, uh, that would take a, a motion by uh, someone who had voted in the prevailing side. And so, um, I don't know if that uh, such a uh, motion is forthcoming or not. Hearing any uh, any motion to uh, I'll, I'll move to open it. Motion to reconsider. Motion by Councillor Kaler to uh, to reconsider the action of uh, the City Council of its uh, June twentieth meeting. Is there a second to that motion? I'll second it for discussion. Second by Councillor Briggs. Question on the motion uh, to reconsider. Question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. So the uh, issue of 8th Street and the uh, rink improvements are before us. Please. First of all, I wasn't I either forgot or wasn't aware that uh, the monies had been set aside uh, to do the work over there. And uh, I'd be willing to discuss it if we, because uh, Cynthia and Pete and I sit on the rec commission and we know the uh, issues that are before us when it comes to recreation and, and budget constraints and everything else. And at our last rec commission meeting, you know, we discussed the fact that, uh, you know, the boards over at Cary Park in our, our dire need of repair also. I'd be willing to uh, make a move if we get commitment that we, we get extra money uh, set aside to do the boards over at Cary Park because <clears throat> maybe it's because I'm old and what I've seen with this community in, in the decline of the population and that we're an aging population and people uh, are somewhat constrained financially to keep dishing money out to, in areas where maybe they don't feel that, that uh, are as necessary as fixing up our streets and sidewalks and everything else. Uh, I haven't had one constituent of mine tell me that I need to move forward with fixing up boards at, at 8th Street versus fixing up sidewalks and streets. And I know that we, at budget time, uh, you know, we struggle and give up a lot of things at the sacrifice of fixing up sidewalks and, and streets. Our tax base is declining, you know, and it's tough. And, you know, there's nine of us on the on the rec commission, and, and we and we look at that, and and I think I could speak for the group and Joe if I'm wrong as a chairman. You know, as as a board, as a rec commission board, you know, we view Cary Park as our Rainier Rink, so to speak, in International Falls. So far as that's where we would like to concentrate our efforts, and and there's more than the the hockey boards 
at the hockey rink at Kerry Park that need fixing. If you go over there, you can see that the, the, you know the the uh, the pavement uh, that goes to the ball fields, and there, there's a lot of other things that need fixing up. And uh, I think that you know. My feeling personally, and I haven't had anybody tell me differently in my constituency anyway, uh, to say that, you know, the time has come that if we're going to have, you know, a declining population and, and uh, Cary Park might be the one that we would concentrate our efforts. But, but I'm willing to compromise if we can make sure we're going to get money to start fixing Cary Park up the way it should be. Mr. Mayor. Um, I, I find it difficult to do budgeting this way. I think we need to look at the whole infrastructure budget when, in August and prioritize. We can't do this piecemeal and do a good job. So I, I concur with Councillor Briggs is that we have to take a holistic view when we're going to expend monies and understand the priorities and understand the money's available. I too am surprised that we put money aside for that. I'm not recalling that, but um, if we did, then how come it, what happened? I mean, if we had budgeted that for this year, is that correct? Yeah, Public Works had put it aside for, it did? for the boards, yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm very concerned because this year we have to give Boise back 46000 that we thought we had in hand due to the reevaluation of their property. We're looking at the sizable give backs in the future. Uh, you know, I, the city administrator gave us a overview of our budget situation coming into this fall. It's very difficult. Our, our basic tax is $2.1 to raise 20,000, we have to raise everybody's taxes 1%. And we're gonna have to raise everybody's taxes 2% just to pay back Boise. So, uh, yeah, you know, maybe that's a little overly simplistic, but basically, well, that's the rough math on this. So I am not going to sit here and commit to anything till we take a good look at our overall finances. Uh, Tommy, just a question for you. Yeah. You know, because um, we're not giving up on 8th Street. I don't want anybody to think that we're giving up on it. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you're well aware of that, that we want to put the water line into the building to make it easier to flood the rink. We want to put another light in over there and everything else. My question to you is, if there's 1,300 and something... Uh, that use the rink in those 55 days. Can you give me a ballpark general rink versus hockey rink? Because I think what the discussion is right now is that people want an extra $10,000 mm -hmm. to, to fix up the hockey rink. But what are the numbers in that hockey rink versus the numbers just on the general rink okay. itself? I, out of that 1300 my uh, just said I would say three quarters of them, at least, are hockey players. And there is our kids that, uh, did, are some of them that did not make the, make the all-star teams and stuff like that, and they just come for, uh, to, to, for recreation. And it should be a, a known fact that it's good to see the kids willing to get out and get away from their computers and I, iPads and or Xboxes or whatever. Yes, but I'd say about three quarters of them are hockey players. Yeah. I mean, please. I, I'd like to add on what, what he had just said, too. I, I would guess it was a larger amount, and I volunteered on Tuesday nights. That happened to be the night that I was there every time. And it, it's kind of a skewed thing, too. He says it's three quarters. I would guess it, it was three quarters and even more because the first two weeks that we were open, it took so much longer to flood the rink because the water was running down the alley. Yeah. So that, that, that time period is probably accurate. That's what I saw, too, about uh, for every two or three kids that were, were skating on the open ice, you had six or seven kids in the, in the ice rink. I think that that's a pretty fair number. 
but it also took two weeks and possibly even three and I, I don't know the exact number on that but it took considerably longer to get that area open for the kids so we had a problem with hockey players playing on the 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 sheet the open sheets of ice and so now that caused a little bit more issue with the kids with the hockey sticks and the pucks going around the kids that are trying to learn how to skate so I I, I just want to add to that and I guess as I have the floor I'd also like to say that um, the I, I I don't have any issues with trying to get more money for Cary Park. The only piece of this that has has me a little concerned is we as a as a council decided that we were going to run the water in, and that makes a lot of sense, and 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 it makes it easier. But that wasn't budgeted for this year. That was something that we just came up with that that'll make it easier for 8th Street Rink. But what they really need is to have that the rink fixed. If Cary Park needs repairs, we need to get that in the budget and look at it for next year. Um, but I don't think that there should be a correlation between what this group came to our, our budget and finance meetings last year when we were looking at what to do this year and put that in, in, in perspective to what Cary Park needs to do. We need to, it, they're separate issues. So if we could get the boards up for these guys and give them another year, um, we've already kind of made the, the decision that we're not gonna have paid, uh, paid staff there. It's gonna be volunteer again. Let's make it as easy as we possibly can on the volunteers that are there. And then secondly, let's look at what we need to do to get Cary Park up and running. Thank you. I would just add that the work to be done at uh, 8th Street Rink um, would be done by uh, city street and park department employees. Uh, the estimate for the posts and the uh, boards would be about 10,000. Um, I don't know where the price of uh, plywood is right now, but very possibly we could end up uh, securing some additional for for uh, Cary Park and uh, take care of that at the same time. Uh, you know, we certainly need to need to hear those things from uh, caretakers there, recreation commission, and and uh, the uh, street department employees when at budget time. Miss Miss Hall. I'm not sure if you guys have seen. Place the plywood because there was nothing all apart when we took the plywood off. Hey, um, is there a motion forthcoming for the budgeted uh, ten thousand dollars? I just I, said I'm not going to motion, but I, I reopen it to give people an opportunity. If they change their mind. That does not include me. I am not changing my mind. I still believe that it's money that should be going to other places. We got to remember that's ten thousand there. What about we have baseball fields? We have all kinds of fields, and everybody that comes, and just because they come, it's going to get budgeted, and then it's going to get fixed. There's all kinds of sports, and this is a time we got to start making hard decisions. Just like everything else where we decide to put the money. And this is just my view. I'm not putting it in boards for 8th Street Park, but last year we made tough decisions too, and that was discontinuing a position. That is nothing compared. This is nothing compared to that. I mean, we're in that tough of times. So, but I just opened it up for if other people wanted to change their mind. They had that opportunity too, but I'm not going to. Certainly prioritizing uh, our funds are going to continue. I mean, it, it's not going to be any easier. Uh, as Councillor Jackson has pointed out, uh, we're, we're going to continue to have to uh, make decisions, tough decisions on where we spend monies, but we do need to keep up our, our, uh, our parks and our streets. And uh, I do it's agree. all part of the committee. I think parks and streets are important, and that's $10,000. It's not going to streets. I have a point of clarification, maybe uh, the city administrator can advise. If we, did we in fact 
approve what and what was the number? I heard fifty five hundred for what we approved in council through the budget process for the boards for ten thousand. Ten thousand. We approved that already. It was approved last year. Okay. So then the funds are sitting in the budget, right? Mayor Council, that's correct. Ten thousand dollars were budgeted um, in I believe fund two eleven for replacing the boards at uh, eighth street rink the posts and the boards because of the condition and we had talked about that and and uh, Dennis Johnson the previous street water commissioner had worked on that uh, in previous years the public works department has been out there with a loader tried to drop the you know bring the post back down and due to the frost heave and uh, freeze thaw cycle um, it brings them back up again and there's space roughly eight inches I think is what was reported on the south east corner that it makes it very difficult to um, put water in there you got to you've got to actually move snow up and try and create some kind of a barrier so that the um, water can stay inside the boards until it freezes and it's been problematic I you know I don't like making decisions like this and and I think that we need to look at the overall budget as I said earlier on the other hand looks like we did this already so I don't know how I can stand here and say no <laughs> I think we did approve it I will make I will move to move forward with the 10,000 um, only be only because I'm an old hockey player and my grandson uses that rink and I feel that uh, that the group that was before us last year did a lot of hard work to to bring it up to snuff so people used it last winter and maybe if we give in this little bit to fix up that hockey rink the numbers will increase even more and if if that happens that's a good thing so well to move forward motion by uh, councillor briggs and second by councillor droba to approve the expenditure of ten thousand for improvements to the 8th Street uh, hockey rink, uh, including uh, posts and boards. I have one other question, Mr. Mayor. If, if we already approved this, why is this a question exactly? How, how is this coming up? I'm I think just, be just because we budget something doesn't mean it, it will be spent. Uh, it doesn't need to come to the City Council. Well, it's been budgeted. Uh, the actual expenditure is still in action that is needed. Approve every expended item that separately, though, in the budget. I don't. We'd be here all day if we did that. We do most that are in uh, in special categories. Okay. Mr. Mayor, to answer that, uh, another point for it is just given the amount of money, it exceeds what an uh, individual department head can approve without council oh, okay. authority. So, so that's, that's the other reason. That's and, why. All right. And I, and again, just for discussion, uh, Councillor Grobe, I believe, made the point, but. The council did approve replacing the light and uh, um, installing the water line, and we're going to use city crews to do as much of that as we can. But that was an unbudgeted item, and that was approved uh, by the council at the last meeting as well. And the argument there was that uh, if we eliminate hassle and time, that we actually would save operating costs in some and and make everybody's life easier. So there was a very persuasive argument to depart from normal operating procedure which is to consider budget so that's why there was a good reason please one more point i, I gotta believe that with our crews doing the work it will come under ten thousand dollars i would like to think that you know it would be well under that but i guess i tend to if I approve something once, I will tend to back up what I approve. <laughs> so I, I guess I. Further discussion? One question. Aye. No. Aye. Aye. No, well, yes. There will be, be four for the motion and one against. The motion carries and the expenditure is approved for 8th Street Rink. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the audience that wishes to approach the council on any item that's not on the agenda? Thank you. There's another opportunity at the end of the meeting for the audience to uh, participate. 
At this time, we'll move to the public <coughs> hearing. We have the second and final reading of Ordinance Number 16 of the fifth series to amend the Code of Ordinances, Section 6-63, Lodging Taxes, to require in part that lodging taxes be paid on a monthly basis versus when sales tax must be paid, monthly or quarterly. Pleasure with the uh, second and final reading of Ordinance Number 16 of the fifth series. Move. Motion by Councillor Briggs to approve. Second. Second by Councillor Kaler. Discussion. Mayor, I would just point out it is a public hearing, so we should take off of the public an opportunity All right. to speak as well. Is there anyone that wishes to speak with, uh, with regard to the second and final reading of Ordinance Number 16 of the fifth series on the lodging tax collection? Hearing none, thank you. Further discussion? Question? Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion is carried. And the second and final reading is approved for ordinance number 16. Thank you. We'll move to uh, new business. And uh, item number two is the uh, First item that we will consider, and that's a resolution approving application for a one to four day temporary on sale liquor license for the Elks Lodge 1599 for August 12 and 13 for their annual corn and brat feed and the all class reunion. I'll move. I'll second. Motion by Councillor Kaler, second by Councillor Droba to approve the resolution. Discussion on the motion of the resolution. Question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion is carried. Resolution is adopted. And the application is approved. Thank you. Item number three is to consider request to co-sponsor the Kuching Labor Assembly Labor Day Picnic, Monday, September the 5th, 2016. Approved closure of 3rd Street in the use of Smoky Bear Park. Move. Motion by Councillor Briggs to approve. All second. Second by Councillor Droba. Discussion on the motion or the uh, use of the uh, Smoky Bear Park and uh, co-sponsoring the Labor Day picnic. That's been quite a success every year, so thank you for doing that, Joe. You're involved with that, so. Yeah, talk to you. Further discussion? Question. Aye. 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 And I'll vote yes. Motion is carried. Approval is given. Thank you. Item number four, we'd like to uh, recognize uh, Ted Broca, our Street and Water Commissioner, for his personal uh, professional development and level one certification through the Building Operator Certification Program. I'd like to call on the City Administrator to uh, share that information, if you would please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council. Um, I just wanted to take this opportunity. As you can see, we uh, received a Building, operation, building Operator Certification letter uh, on behalf of uh, Mr. Brokaw, who had just passed that course, and it's a fairly rigorous course, it's fairly time consuming, and I think the important point to make with this is that, um, as they pointed out in the letter, that sometimes these facilities management departments and credentialed personnel can sh show as much as $20,000 in annual savings through uh, energy efficiency and, and other uh, improvements. And, and Ted has really taken this uh, to heart. He's done a good job in trying to upgrade the heating system that we have here, and uh, we're moving forward with the library as well to try and improve some efficiencies. Uh, we've also done a lot with uh, LED lighting in the buildings, and as you know, we've uh, undertaken an effort to install LED lighting street lights because it's uh, more energy efficient, lasts longer, and reduce our uh, overall cost of operation. So. Uh, I think I wanted to take this opportunity to personally thank Ted for all his work and his, his new certification, and I wanted to make sure that the council was familiar with that as well. And Mr. Mayor, if, if you wouldn't mind, it might be good for Ted to just come up here and just briefly talk about some of the details about what this entails and what he has envisioned. So, uh, <laughs> it wasn't my idea. And on his way up here, uh, welcome you know, to On the Spot. <laughs> uh, Ted, but Ted has gone from being our, our building and ground supervisor to uh, being the new street water commissioner. So. This is his first opportunity to address the council as a street water commissioner, but I think this background information will be excellent 
uh, background to help us uh, again improve efficiency across all of our facilities throughout the city. So, before he starts here, I just like this is an example, I think, of the dedication and to the job that Ted's gonna show and a good choice he was for the job of the Water and Street Commissioner. And on behalf of the City Council, uh, Ted, I'd like to thank you for, I know you traveled to, to Fergus Falls, uh, made many, many trips there for the uh, educational sessions and uh, in getting this uh, certification that uh, certainly I think is an example for, for all employees and the investment is certainly uh, going to be worthwhile for the community. Some words from you, thank you. One nice thing about it, I'd like to thank Minnesota Power because uh, once we finish a small project that the um, uh, tuition money will be reimbursed in three different steps um, by completing, by passing, and by doing an energy efficiency project, which we've, we've done several. Um, I'm a firm believer in take care of what we have um, rather than, you know, I hear the discussion about 8th Street boards. You know, we tend sometimes to let stuff get to the point where they can't be repaired, they have to be replaced. And um, I'm trying to head into the direction of taking better care of it so that we don't have to replace it. Um, and that's kind of a it's very basic, but you know, I wanna take really good care of what we have um, so we can do other things because I believe if we do take care of it, um, It'll go a lot longer and we can free up money to do other stuff. And I appreciate the opportunity. It's been a while since I've had homework and had to do tests. Um, so that was, that was a big change for me. But uh, I appreciate the opportunity and uh, I, I want to encourage other city staff. Um, con continuing education is very important and um, I would like to give the employees the opportunity to do this, some of the same stuff you, know, you folks have let me do because uh, it helps, you know, I love my job. And, and a lot of part of that is, is some of the education that I've gotten, it's, it's fun. Um, and I look forward to it. One thing that I'm working on right now is with all of our energy efficiency stuff, it's tough to track. So we're in the process right now of starting to um, set a baseline or benchmark all of our buildings. Um, so we can have a baseline, which, you know, your baseline is, um, your energy costs, it's not affected by weather. So when you do change LED lighting and that type of stuff, you can see, you'll be able to see the, um, the payback and the benefit of it. And that's, I plan on doing that with all city buildings um, here shortly. So thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations on securing that certification. <laughs> I know that was heartfelt. I did, yeah. I did text him to make sure he's going to be here. <laughs> Item number five under new business, appointment of a uh, chief of police. I'd like to uh, uh, welcome uh, Sheriff Perrin Headland, uh, Chief Deputy John Fromke, and County Attorney Jeff Nagloski for being here this evening. I'd first like to, uh, to outline for the counselors and citizens the process, process that was followed to uh, come to this appointment. And, Upon the uh, retirement announcement by uh, Chief Mike Musich, I sent a letter to the International Falls Police Civil Service Commission members, Mr. Tim Everson, Mr. Dave Peterson, and Mr. Marty Cody, to begin the process to fill the forthcoming vacancy. The commissioners advertised the position and six officers made application. The Civil Service Commissioners secured the assistance of Chief Manor of the City of Chisholm, they interviewed all six applicants, choosing the top three that scored the highest in the uh, process, and they recommended the three to the mayor for appointment pursuant to the Minnesota statute and the rules of civil service and the city charter sections 28 and 103. By having received the three names certified by the police civil service commissioners, I conducted a personal interview with each candidate through a series of 17 questions on leadership, communication, technology, training, and department collaboration with other agencies. I can tell you that all three individuals are qualified and capable of being the chief. However, today we find in a number of cities in our country, police officers are under assault by the very citizens they have pledged 
to protect and serve. And while that's not a new challenge to the men and women in the blue uniform, it is an issue that has received plenty of attention in the media and from society. Therefore, in making this appointment, it is my belief that Officer Richard Maston is best suited and qualified to bring the officers in the International Falls Police Department into the future through excellent community policing. With those remarks, I place before the City Council the appointment of Richard Maston as the next Chief of Police for the City of International Falls, effective July 23, 2016, and request your approval. I'll move. Motion by Councillor Kaler to approve the appointment to the Mr. Richard Aston. Second. And second by Councillor Briggs. Discussion on the motion or the appointment? I would just like to add that I believe Rich will do a fine job and also what a hard job it was for you to decide between all the candidates that are all very qualified, being an old man and being around there a long time. By the way, the jail administrator from the sheriff's office is here too. <laughs> <laughs> Further discussion on the motion to appoint? Hearing none, question? Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion is carried. Appointment is approved. Thank you. And I would ask the uh, city administrator now to uh, conduct the oath of office uh, for police chief at the uh, front of the council chambers. If, uh After me, I, Richard Maston, I, Richard Maston, do solemnly swear, do solemnly swear, that I will support the Constitution of the United States, that I will support the Constitution of the United States. Minnesota, in the state of Minnesota, and faithfully and to the best of my ability, and faithfully and with the duties of chief of police, discharge the duties ask the uh, chief appointee, what you find? Uh, so Josh Maston, <laughs> Chad, 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 I'm sorry, I'll get it, Chad to uh, come forth and, and uh, pin the, uh, the chief's pins on uh, his collar. Thanks hard. No. <laughs> Just like this, MB. Not good. So no boom, back. boom. No <laughs> Don't worry about the backs. <laughs> Congratulations. being here. Historic occasion. Good evening. Hey. <laughs> Item number six under new business is the request to have the mayor and city council set a joint meeting on a Tuesday with the planning commission to discuss uh, three items uh, to um, Review the draft RFP to update the comprehensive plan, uh, land use ordinance and subdivision ordinance for the city. To uh, review the proposed ordinance to allow chickens within the city limits. And to review uh, information to be assembled by staff, review law, uh, law enforcement and DNR input with regard to deer hunting within the city limits. So those three items would be on the agenda for a special meeting of the, uh, and a joint meeting with the uh, Planning Commission. What is your pleasure with that and uh, what Tuesday would work best? I would recommend next Tuesday, this coming Tuesday, a week from today. That would be... Uh, the 
18. July 12th, 12th. And at what time? It's 5, 4.30, 5 o'clock? 4.30 again? Or? No, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Do you think uh, some of the commissioners, planning commissioners, could be here for that? I, I'm sure they would, Your Honor. We normally meet at 6 o'clock. So oh, do you? Okay. Yeah. So we, we okay, 6 o'clock. All right. I think there's more planning commission members than there is us, right? Uh, yeah. Next Tuesday? Yeah. So we should keep it at 6. Yeah. Well, I meet on Tuesdays anymore. <laughs> okay. So a motion to have a uh, joint meeting with the Planning Commission with regard to those three items on uh, July the 12th at 6 p.m. Would be in order. I'll move. Motion by Councilor Droba. Second. S second by Councilor Briggs. At such a meeting at uh, July the 12th at 6 p.m. Question on the motion? I'm just so excited. That's all I got. Okay. Uh -oh. <laughs> Are no further discussion? Chair will call the question. Aye. No. Aye. Aye. And I'll vote yes. There being four for the motion and one against, the motion carries, and the joint meeting is scheduled for 6 p.m. on July the 12th. Thank you. There's one thing, if I may add to this, is, is I see with the chicken resolution, which was close to my... <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> ...was um, there's Duluth in there where you want International Falls, so I think it was copied from the Duluth ordinance, so just you want to take Duluth out of there. Um, and I, as I read the ordinance, I thought if we adopt that, that'll deter many people from putting chickens in, you got to be pretty serious about it if you're going to build a heated house. Yeah. Which is maybe a good thing. But I'm getting ahead of the... No. That'll be the discussion at the meeting. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. We we'll move to item 7 under the uh, agenda, and that is the Planning Commission recommendation to schedule a first reading and public hearing to adopt an ordinance to opt out of the new health care dwelling law to be effective September the 1st, 2016, and second, to review the related land use issues more in depth as part of the process to update to the comprehensive plan and land use regulations. Pleasure with that um, recommendation. May, may I need, I need some clarification. We, well, I'd like to have a motion first if we're going to. I can't move on it unless I understand it. Oh, the, you just have a question with regard yeah, to... Yeah, I do. I just okay. have a question. Thank you. Is review the related land use relating to the opt the health care dwelling law, or is, it re, or is that a phrase that refers to any, the general... What does related mean there? Hmm? Strader? What are we talking about? Yeah. Mayor <laughs> Council. I thought I knew. <laughs> I don't have a clue. <laughs> I just want to be clear in my interpretation. Mm -hmm. Just a little background information. The governor signed a law in May that allows communities to, um, well, actually the state law allows um, landowners to place mobile residential dwellings in their property um, as a temporary care facility um, while they might need that. And, and so that's a new law, but the law also allows municipalities to opt out provided they adopt an ordinance doing so by September 1st. And so when this issue, because it relates to a large extent with land use issues, we brought it to the Planning Commission at their meeting last Tuesday. And in discussion, the commission came to the conclusion that um, it would be best for the City of International Falls to take advantage of the opt-out provision now so that we wouldn't allow these as temporary care facilities on the properties until we had an opportunity to look at it further. So the first part is recommending that we initiate the process, we being the city council, initiate the process to have the public hearings that it requires a first reading and a second reading to opt out of the um, health care dwelling law. And then also as part of their separate motion though is they want uh, 
the council to understand that they're willing to look at this some more when we get into the comprehensive planning process to see if it maybe it makes sense for us and if it does under what circumstances do we want to put standards in there um, so they haven't totally shut the door on it but we want to take advantage of the opt-out provision now and give the city more time when we go through the comprehensive planning process we can get more public input as to whether or not they want to see modular homes or manufactured homes or an RV in somebody's front yard for a year on a lot that might not even have a driveway in their front yard or something. So those are some of the concerns. Now that sheds quite a bit of light in yes, the meaning on what that second paragraph is there. Okay, so I'll move. I'll second. Motion by Councillor Jackson, second by Councillor Briggs to uh, have the first reading and a public hearing to adopt the ordinance to opt out of the new health care dwelling law. Discussion on the motion or recommendation? Mr. Mayor. Please. Discussions with other staff. Um, we envision that this would be part of chapter four of the city code. So that's the housing code and in by so doing, um, it would ha just have a first and a second reading at the city council level. If for some reason the council and the city attorney, and I would be looking for his opinion on this, thought that it was better to be in the land use regulations, then it may require a public hearing on the part of the planning commission with the recommendation of the city council before it actually becomes an ordinance. But uh, in visiting with the housing inspector, which is uh, Adam Manasa and uh, Kelly Myers, we both we all three thought that it would be better in the housing section which would be chapter four in which case the council could take action and the planning commission has already made the recommendation to, to move forward with the opt-out ordinance so unless the city attorney has some reason that he thinks it has to be in the land use regulations was that the uh, new ordinance and there's a sample ordinance that the league of minnesota cities has put together, that that would be part of uh, chapter four of the code of ordinances I accept that, whatever you just said there is. <laughs> All right. All of that. No, Mayor, just a question of the city attorney. Do you see it appropriate in the housing code section of the city charter? I think that's fine. Oh. We're not giving up on having a place in the backyard to take care of Grandma. If she needs help, we're just on our own regulations on it? Well, right now we were opting out of the new law taking effect and where we would have to allow it and, and give us some time to study it as part of the comprehensive planning process. Someday we may decide not to allow someone to have a dwelling in the yard to take care of grandma or grandpa or mom and dad? Well, uh, right? That's correct. All right, that's all I needed to know. Is there any state money with this that we get? No, okay, well. <laughs> It's an optional mandate. Very good. Optional mandate. No <laughs> That's an oxymoron, isn't it? I, I understand Councilor Kaler's concern, and that was mine too. This is an aging community, many people trying to care for their aging relatives. So it's. It, I read the material very carefully because it's a difficult decision to make, really. Mr. Mayor, I, I hear it right. Um, if we didn't opt out, they could just come in and do it without us having any say in it whatsoever. Yeah. So I think we're protecting ourselves, and you know, by by making this move, so that we make sure that the uh, the appropriate type of building and the appropriate type of lot happens instead of just. So we don't have a rental house that backyard. has a trailer in the backyard that Grandma's living in, and it's a rental, and right. all the blight issues that we've already had in the past. So. Well, I'm willing to put up with some blight issues if it's to take care of grandma and grandpa <laughs> or mom and dad living through that. The only thing we need I was living in an enclosed snow by way of a house. So, I mean, that's, a, that's where we need to have that ability under the in the meantime, we're worried about all these houses and sheds in the backyards, and we're talking about having, gonna have a meeting about having chicken coops in town. Well, if grandma's living in it, it's gonna be okay. That's all I'm saying, if we're, if we're worried about that, and we're having a meeting about chicken coops. Well, we wanna have grandma's chicken 
Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think we've gotten far flung here. Point of order. <laughs> I'm going to call the question on the uh, the motion to have the uh, first reading and uh, on the ordinance to opt out. Aye. No. Aye. Aye. No vote yes. Motion is carried uh, on a vote of four, four and one against. Thank you. Item eight, and uh, we have a resolution from uh, Wells Fargo Advisors. It's a resolution to allow banking and investment relationship with them. The administrator. Thank you, Mayor. This is a non-corporate resolution, which is a standard form that Wells Fargo has. Uh, the city, every January, adopts a resolution designating depositories of city monies, and we've included that in the back of your packet. Uh, maybe it's every other year. This one is dated January 15. Uh, but Wells Fargo is included as one of the official depositories for city monies, and we had put a uh, we had priced some. Uh, I think a one-year CD with the uh, official depositories that we have on record. Wells Fargo happened to have the highest interest rate, so we want to deposit monies with them. In order to do so, they, they need to have us adopt this non-corporate resolution, which um, authorizes the appropriate individuals to be able to sign documents and that type of thing. So we're asking the council to adopt that. Uh, the last one that was done was several years ago when we had a previous city administrator. So asking the council to adopt the non-corporate resolution to allow us to invest monies with Wells Fargo again. Move. Motion by Councilor Jackson to adopt the resolution. Second. Second by Councilor Droba. Discussion on the motion or the resolution. And, and uh, I would ask uh, the city administrator, uh, they would still be Putting uh, collateral behind the uh, uh, these uh, investments that we have there, so they would be highly secured. Yes, they have to be collateralized. Good. Further discussion. Question. Aye. 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 Yes. Motion is carried. Resolution is adopted and. Allow the banking and investment relationship with Wells Fargo. Thank you. Go to uh, reports of boards, committees, and department heads. City Administrator. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Council, um, staff has finished reviewing the finance officer applications, and we'd like to schedule interviews here in the next week or two. And I'm suggesting that we have the HR council members, which is uh, Councilor uh, Jacksaw and Briggs participate in the interviews with myself and the Deputy City Administrator. I don't know if it's council approval. That's for informational purposes if it requires council approval. And as for that now. I move to allow the human resource members to be a part of the interview committee for the finance officer. Motion by Councilor Jackson, second by Councilor Briggs to allow the members of the Human Resources Committee to uh, participate in the uh, interviews uh, with for the Finance Director. Question on the motion? Question. Aye. 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 I'll vote yes. Motion is carried and approval is given. Thank you. Further? Nothing further. Thank you. City Attorney. Mr. Mayor, Council, uh, we've run into a snag uh, with regard to the uh, purchase of the acreage in Lake of the Woods County with the uh, Biggins family. Uh, supposed to close uh, July 1st. Uh, on half of the funds, uh, $56,000 to them, and then the second half would be due in January. However, as a part of the title search on this process and uh, their providing uh, a title insurance policy to us, uh, we discovered that about nine years ago, they had placed this acreage along with significant other acreage that they have into 
about a sustainable forest uh, plan. Resources Act. Yes, yep. yeah, and that uh, gives them each year when they follow certain criteria, they get payments for that acreage, uh, and. Oddity of that law uh, prohibits property from being both in the sustainable forest and in a conservation easement. There was movement and there was actually a bill in the legislature this past session to change that aspect of the law because the conservation easement in, in most instances is more restrictive than the sustainable forest, so it's really a good thing. They should work together and be hand in hand. You'd think that they would be encouraging that. Uh, and in the committee, uh, everybody was in favor of that, but unfortunately it got attached to the tax bill, and the tax bill didn't get passed. Uh, so absent uh, a uh, special session by the governor and action being taken on the tax bill, which includes this law, proposed law, uh, would be prohibited. Uh, and that's where we're at. I, I checked with uh, several individuals with the state, both in the Revenue Department and with the DNR today, and, and uh, you know, Jim had been given some different information previously from what, from what I discovered. Uh, so it's basically on hold. Uh, and looking under the impression uh, that uh, Mopus has properties that are in both, but he doesn't know how that occurred or, or if in fact it's true. Uh, so he's out exploring other options so that we can continue to move forward, but, but right now uh, we're facing another impediment in our effort to acquire more wetlands credits. Report back, hopefully. Positive. Does this defeat the uh, sale entirely, or what? We, or do we yes, I mean no, it we're not. I mean it, it doesn't. Right. Yeah, it d doesn't give us the the title. You know, it's an impediment on the title. Uh, the we have to go back and renegotiate and sign a new contract and everything. Well, we don't. I mean, the only reason we want the property is to get the wetland. Right. Credit. So if well, we can't put it in the conservation easement. We don't want it. What I'm getting at is so. if the legislature did come through with the change, then we'd have to start from scratch. We can't just put this. No, up. I don't think I don't think we have to start from scratch. Again, oh. assuming that, and, and again, with every law that passed, they have an effective date. You know, if we have a special session in July and there's something passed, and we have an effective date of August 1st this year, but I don't, you know, if if the effective date is not going to be till August 1st next year, you know, then we have to ask ourselves: Is that yeah. You know, do we still want to proceed or not? But if if something happens quickly, which right now it really doesn't look like anything's going to happen quickly, yeah. so it, it, it's really going to depend upon if there's a special session, what the effective date would be. As the attorney, the, the uh, I thought those agreements were in eight-year increments for the SFIA. They're actually in ten. This this particular one is is a ten-year agreement, and it's. There's, there's about a year and a half left to go uh, in it, uh, but the other, uh, at least the people I spoke with today, thought that there, there's an opt-out process, but it takes four years. Well, the, that doesn't do us much good. Uh, in the language of these things, you know, any subsequent buyer is, faces the same restrictions as the owner that put it into the program. So. Uh, own it, but we'd be sitting on it for at least a year and a half, not being able to put it into a conservation easement. Exactly. So it must be a minimum of eight years that you have to tie up your property under the SFIA. No, I know that this particular one's a 10-year commitment, okay. and there's about a year and a half left to go. Thank you. So we'll wait to see if the legislature does something uh, within the next year and a half, or uh, right now we're not in a position to, to purchase it because it's not going to be able to meet our needs. I, I don't see why it won't pass the legislature. Yeah. I mean, if they ever... I, I've been told that there's no opposition to yeah, this that's and why it's attached to the tax bill. I have no idea. Yeah. So it's going to happen. Just... I don't think you'd think so, but... Yeah. <laughs> I never want to speak for the legislature because strange things occurred out there.
Thank you. Further, City Attorney? Thank you. Chief Musich. Madam Mayor and Council, the month of uh, June, our activity report, uh, Sergeant T. Lander and Officer Kosh taught a fingerprinting class at uh, Ring River to the uh, boats. Uh, the officers were extra detail at the Viking Street dance. Council meeting were involved. The uh, homicide suspect and a search warrant in June. Also, calls for service 405, general calls, traffic stop 60, medical assist 39, 81, total 585. And this time last year we had 534. So, thank you to your officers for the uh, parade escort uh, yesterday in the July 4th uh, celebration uh, for their traffic direction and uh, coverage in the park, and uh, uh, especially for their. Uh, support in the emergency services. I know you had a number of calls yesterday in addition to all the activities of the holiday. I'd like, well, I'd like to just take this opportunity to thank Chief Musich for his almost 30 years of service with International Falls and South International Falls Police Force, just in case he thought he was going to sneak out of something like that. I got one more meeting. To, it's got to come. I got guys said just in no? case he thought he thought about it. You're going to miss this, Mike. <laughs> just wait. He'll be here. <laughs> All right. Further questions? Thank you. Manasa. Council. Uh, report for June. We had uh, three fire department call outs, two were city responses. Um, one industrial fire, it was a mobile equipment fire, one smoke alarm, uh, one rural response for a motor vehicle accident rollover, uh, two responses by myself, just a false alarm activation and a smoke scare, and then we also did one CN train fill. Our monthly fire meeting was on the 16th, uh, which consisted of a regular business meeting, a relief association meeting, and then we did fireworks training for the upcoming 4th of July. Uh, our ambulance in the month of June, uh, I believe this is the busiest month I've seen. I think this is a high number. Uh, we did 112 911s, 65 transfers for a total of 177 runs, compared to June of last year with a total of 128 runs. So we're about uh, 50 ahead, 49 ahead. Uh, we, Almost six a day. Uh, yes, we've been busy. <laughs> Um, monthly meeting and training on the 8th with a regular business meeting and then we did uh, our training was ATV accidents and kind of outdoor accidents and then we've also been running an ACLS class in-house uh, that's also been going very well so our EMTs are getting a little bit of advanced cardiac uh, life support uh, training and it's been going very well kind of up in their game a little bit uh, I won't read through every number on the housing report. If anybody has any questions pertaining to that, I'll certainly answer them. But questions for Chief Manasa. Lots of good numbers there, and thank you to the members of the uh, fire department and ambulance departments for their uh, work on the parade, the uh, kitty races, and and the fireworks went off very very well. Thank you. Very very safe and. Uh, Fun celebration. Absolutely. Thank you. I'd just like to point out it's very rare people give me a bullhorn, so thank you. <laughs> I, regretfully, yes. I'll take the batteries out next time. You can run around with it and pretend, but. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Broca, any, anything 
Further? That's <laughs> twice <laughs> now. Move to uh, reports to the mayor, council committees, boards, and commissions. Well, since ladies first, I'm going to leap in. Uh, we had our neighborly cleanup cleanup. Brian contributed his trailer, right? Trailer? Yeah. And it was very successful. Joe, I want to recognize Joe. He organized us on that site. And if it weren't for you, I think we would have been disorganized. I really appreciate how you took charge and got it all rolling that morning at 7 o'clock. So thank you, Joe. The committee owes you. So most of the committee members were there, I think. Um, we had three high school students and a number of other people. And it's escaping me. I did interview everybody. So you can watch it on KCC TV. <laughs> but um, I think it was very successful. And we're looking forward to the next one, which is, which is July 30th. And we'll be doing north of 11th Street in the center ward. And I still need to interview you, Brian. I yeah. need the trailer again for that particular we, we, we As a representative of center ward, yes, you do. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah. And uh, so that, it was well controlled. I think, you know, we learned a few things. We're tweaking the process, but I think we managed it very well. If, don't you think, Joe? Yeah. yeah. I thought it was interesting that when I was dropping the trailer off, I'm watching a city dump truck go by full to the brim with the branches and falling down trees. And I, and I unhooked and I went around the block and, and I'm looking at, holy cow, there's three trees down there. There's a guy in his yard cutting up tree from the, from the storm that rolled through. So it was unfortunate that the weather didn't cooperate. Or I think it would have been a better day. It was, it was still pretty good, but yeah, the weather did impede it. Although it cleared up at 8 o'clock, so. And I'd like to uh, put in a plug for Friends Garbage. It was great oh, to absolutely. see. I mean, you know, you know the, their whole family was there, you know, with their trucks and everything. I thought that was a great uh, community Pearson service for them, for them to do that. Levi Pearson, Friends, both Michelle and Wade, and... Um, Brian Nelson, I think, did I get all the vendors? Wayne Fuller. Uh, and Wayne Fuller, what a prince. Yeah, he really helped us a lot with, you know, staying legal and in compliance. So it was really an act of a whole team of people and the city, it should be proud of the effort. I do have a few other things to add. Um, I did review the airport audit and I'm going to bring it up because there was major progress on the reporting and thanks to Kyra and I want to credit Betty as well. The two of them have overcome some of the uh, findings from the prior year as far as tracking grants, etc. So congrats on that. Um, there were a couple things there that need a little more work and I expect to see that will happen. Um, the one thing that I'm concerned about, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to bring it up again, I've brought it up twice before, is I'd really like to understand what the operating cash is because you have an operating budget as opposed to a grant project. And I am concerned that we end up surprised with not knowing that we have a hole like we did two years ago. So. I'm just bringing it up again respectfully. I don't know how you, you do it, but I think it can be done. And I did have a long conversation with the auditors, and they said, according to the nationwide standard, the airport is a proprietary fund. Proprietary means business-like. However, the proceeds, the business proceeds of the airport are about 12% of the total operating budget. So. I don't know how well proprietary fund accounting really does serve the airport commission when you have so much funds tied up and, and effort tied up in grants and 800,000 approximately tied up in running the airport itself apart from capital improvements. So I have an issue with the auditors, but you know. 
something that, that Kyra and, and Betty can get together to, to help get you what you want? Yeah, there, well, I, I think they can, you know. Um, I think the airport commission has to authorize them to do it because they're certainly not going to take direction from me, you know. Uh, secondly, the I did attend a KETA meeting, and... Um, the Voyage Forward group came and presented their uh, proposal to partner with KETA regarding marketing of the county as a whole. And um, the KETA board voted in concept, in concept to support the Voyage Forward effort. One of the objections to the process was a lack of funding. And it is true that KETA had an $82,000 loss at the end of, I think, May was the report. However, the cold box had a $373,000 profit and $600,000 in liquid assets. So my point here is that since I asked who that those assets belong to, and I was told that it belonged to KEDA. So my response here is to urge KEDA to consider adjusting your budget to help the Voyage Forward process, given that the uh, funds seem to be available in one of your departments, which is the coal buck uh, operations. So <clears throat> I get what I'm saying is, that the lack of an advertising budget right now shouldn't stop a vibrant effort to move the voyage forward marketing effort because there are funds in fact ample funds in my view but you know I'm, so I'm just making that comment as a city councilor who values the voyage forward effort and let's see what else do I I guess that's it yeah. Councilor Droba. Um, first of all, as a key to board member, I'd like, like to point out that uh, it was my understanding specifically from Mr. Welcome that at, at this time they weren't looking for funding at all. And I think that there was a couple other issues and, and we are going to be meeting in the very near future to kind of hammer out some of those. So yeah. I don't think funding was, was one of the major concerns, although it was brought up in, was in right. the meeting. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, Secondly, I'd like to thank all of the departments of the city, street, public works, water, police, fire chief, ev everybody who uh, made the 4th of July the celebration as it was. Um, I'm a Facebook person. I've seen a lot of Facebook pictures from uh, friends and family that are in other cities, and there's trash all over the city after uh, their parades and their events. We do a heck of a bang-up job here because the place was clean. There was a little bit of of uh, manure on the streets, but you know what, we can deal with that. We did a great job as a community and, and it's, it's all of you guys that put it together and the volunteers, the 4th of July Commission, it was something very be to be proud of uh, this last weekend. Um, and secondly, I, uh, I've talked to uh, the mayor and I've talked to the fire chief and I believe I'm going to be working with the new police chief and I think we would like to, I would like to see the city of International Falls do a uh, September 11th memorial being the 15th, uh, the 15th anniversary of September 11th um, with the service, the, um, the respective services that we have in our community and I'm going to try to work something up so that we can bring it to the council at the next meeting. Uh, I think that would be very, very important for our community with the sense of patriotism that we've been seeing since uh, the Vietnam Veterans Memorial, or uh, Welcome Home. And besides that, I have nothing. Very good. Thank you. Further? I, I would like to, uh, to thank uh, the many organizations, Rotary, VFW, Elks, all those that uh, helped to uh, put on the July 4th celebration. It, uh, great uh, community effort and just a, uh, a wonderful time. We were blessed with, uh, with good weather and uh, it turned out very, very well. So thank you. Anything further under boards and commissions? If not, we'll go to the audience. I'd like to speak on the KEDA uh, uh, situation. Um, 
Dr. Jackson uh, referred to. And uh, are you suggesting that uh, Keita provide additional monies uh, here as a result of uh, the relatively liquid position uh, that they have uh, here for uh, um, Voyager Forward? I am suggesting that should, for it's a marketing effort that they approved in concept. Um, if you if you visit the Metropolitan Council website, you'll see what a um, regional approach to promotion can do. And so I think that you know Voyage Forward is looking at a regional, a countywide approach, which is new. And ultimately, it to accomplish anything, it takes man hours, it takes money. I, it, ultimately, there'll be an expenditure of resources required. It takes good ideas, though. It takes good ideas. It takes worthy ideas, but it's always in the the devil's in the detail and in the execution, and it always takes money and resources. And I was heard at the Kita meeting that there was a nine thousand dollar budget for advertising, and there really wasn't any funds to really do anything with promotion. And I just wanted to say that yes, if there if Kita is the lead economic agency for our county, as that was decided now through Voyage Forward, then Voyage Forward partnership with Kita is going to need, you know, that's going to need funding at some point. Well, my point is, uh, Councillor, I hear that um, with respect to economic development. Uh, going back to the basic report uh, that was generated by uh, the Chicago uh, firm at a considerable amount of money, uh, the ultimate conclusion uh, was that there possibly should be one uh, uh, area, uh, pardon me, one unit uh, that would be carrying economic uh, development uh, uh, in instead as a result of a length of time uh, since that report was issued uh, here, uh, significantly, uh, from what I see, there has been no change. We still have Kuchko, uh, we still have uh, uh, KDA, uh, we still have KEDA, we have KDA uh, Advisory uh, uh, Board. Uh, there's a confluence of uh, 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 units uh, here uh, with uh, uh, apparently no significant leadership. The idea of choosing people uh, to be uh, directors of, of destiny, uh, which I pointed out uh, in one of the meetings, you can have a destiny forward or you can have a destiny backward uh, too. So with respect to spending additional money uh, with something that basically hasn't produced results other than the consumption of money and the usage of a lot of time by people uh, here who basically have never run a business uh, in their life or have ever put up any capital to the best of my knowledge uh, here that are attempting uh, to direct uh, an economic uh, move forward. Uh, as I indicated in the KEDA meeting uh, here, one side of the coin is that we put in a lot of time, we put in a lot of effort, and we put in a lot of uh, money. And I said the other side of the coin, it could be a bad investment. Even Warren Buffett uh, has indicated that he's made bad investments uh, here because he didn't really understand uh, here, or the goals were not clear. Uh, and I happen to go back a long, long time in listening to him, I was educated uh, through a book by the same man that educated him. So what I'm talking about uh, is, is it worthwhile really putting time and effort into this, one, into this form, the way that uh, we're going about it uh, here, recognizing 100% that at the present time, there is not effective marketing going on and perhaps it should be looked at uh, here. Uh, but you don't hire people uh, here that have not had results uh, with respect to uh, marketing. 
I don't know because I have not uh, looked at the resume or looked at the background. I know what my background uh, is because I lived it. I also know what some other people's background are that are very successfully. Um, one of them uh, is Dino Pellucci. Now, uh, he's one of the few success stories uh, here uh, of all of this economic development business in northern Minnesota of a mayor, very major scale. I'm not saying that that's the ultimate idea to shoot for, but uh, to be able to sell something uh, for $63 million uh, uh, here uh, using uh, essentially taxpayers' uh, money as capital. But uh, to me, thus far, uh, it's uh, been like bowling in the wind. Uh, and so maybe we should take, sit back and take a fresh approach uh, here to this whole economic development uh, thing. Because recognizing that even people that are in the private sector without asking to go to the public sector at all, and the venture capital business recognize that when they put forth venture capital, everything isn't always going to work out in that matter. Uh, the success ratio on venture capital basis uh, is significantly less than 50%. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> I guess uh, with regard to KEDA and the uh, cold weather testing, I think it's been uh, been very successful. That's why you're seeing that, that they do have uh, additional monies, uh, um, cash flow, and uh, I think we have a request from uh, from one of the clients to have an additional uh, coal box, and so I think that uh, you know there's there's uh, priorities, and I think uh, if we if we've seen success with the coal boxes, maybe we need to uh, continue in that direction. So I I think that. Uh, you know, marketing, uh, I think, uh, is can be good, but I think uh, also can uh, money can evaporate pretty fast and not see any results. Please. Yeah, the, the one thing about the Voyage Forward effort that's key and we can't lose sight of is that it, 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 it's an effort to corral, harness the energy of the citizens of Kuchichin County to stand behind the place we live to make it grow in the wake of a declining paper industry. And so that's the, that's the underlying energy there and we need to respect that and engage that because if we don't have a general will up here to succeed, it's not going to happen. It's just not going to happen. And, and, and that is why we cannot afford to to not enhance and do what we can with the Voyage Forward effort. We've got to do it. Well, one of the significant structural problems I see is under the KED office right now, uh, you have a confluence of uh, uh, operations in there. You have Cusco, uh, you have KEDA, you have cold water testing, uh, and you have a small business administration. To me, having four operations there, and there may be others that I'm not aware of, uh, it's very difficult from an accounting standpoint just to declare uh, here what uh, is happening. Is, uh, uh, and all of them don't have the same goal uh, here. So I one of the things to do is to clean that up so you have one thing uh, that you're talking about. And at the present time, I don't see it and I haven't seen it. Uh, and consequently, what you have is an element of mass confusion out there, uh, even among people that are relatively close. And the public certainly is confused. They don't know, uh, well, <laughs> they really don't know uh, the differences between all of these units that are out there uh, that contain the words development, uh, economic development. Uh, here, uh, and it's very difficult uh, even for somebody that studies it uh, here to have a grasp of who's doing what. Dan, you are, you, our discussion between the two of us is boring the rest of everybody else, so we'll have to continue it outside the hall here. Okay, yeah. Sure. Anyone else in the audience wishes to? Joe? Okay, um, I got three things to go over with you. 
Uh, first of all, I want to thank you as Cooch County Labor Assembly President and Chairman of the Labor Picnic this year for your support and your partnership with that. Um, I have a couple of requests I'd like to see if we could get done. We have the tractor pull or tractor ride that floats around the city. Well, it uses the main street avenue over there. Can we get that morning or the next day, the police chief put no parking signs on both sides of Third Street? What we had before is when it's blocked off on each end, we still got people that park in there. And there's been several times where kids come darting between them cars to try to get on that tractor, and we're just afraid somebody's going to get hurt. We already approved that, didn't we? You got to block the street off. But people park there before the street gets blocked off. I got you kids running between vehicles to get out to the tractor to go out for a, a hayride. 6th Avenue to 8th Avenue, we want no parking? 6th um, Avenue, 8th Avenue, that would be fine. We're just looking at Main Street. Lock off, no parking on both sides of the street. Any motion for that? Yes. I'll move. We have a motion by Councillor Jackson, second by Councillor Droba, to have no parking on 3rd Street uh, for the uh, picnic on uh, Labor Day. Discussion on the motion? All those in favor of the motion signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Motion is carried. Thank you. Thank you. Um, second, I wanted to ask you if it's possible to have the paramedics there. We had them there two years ago. And haven't had them the last two years. Last year we had quite a few bumps and scrapes and kids falling and getting hurt on the playgrounds and on the band shell and stuff like that and we wound up sending them over to the fire hall. Is it possible that we could get the paramedics there? Not on call, I understand if they, got to, if they get a call they gotta go. I understand that. We'll certainly take it up with Chief Manasa and we can let you know. <laughs> That's a holiday pay day too, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. What about the school nurse? Or county health department nurse? I don't know. I mean, there's other resources, yes. Can you come again for the welcome? Yes. Okay, appreciate it. As chairman of the International Falls Housing and Commercial Redevelopment Committee, um, just wanted to give you a little more update than what she did. We had a fantastic time, super turnout. Uh, we got rid of at least a dozen uh, truckloads of brush and stuff. Uh, we had some of our people to, I tell you those girls from the city council from the school, went out with uh, Mr. Pearson and actually took brush and trees that had fallen down out of people's houses out and, and hauled it away for them. So they were doing that as well as collecting it at the site. So that worked out pretty good. We didn't get much grass that time, Brian. We appreciate you. your trailer. We only got four bags of grass, but under the conditions, we understand that. But we did get 51 tires out of people's yards. So that ought to make some neighbors pretty happy. So that junk ain't sitting in somebody's yard anymore. A lot of garbage that came in. Again, that's free. You know, tires are, are three dollars, but the garbage is free. Demolition is eleven dollars for a pickup load. Um, this time, we're going to add on that we will take white goods at the site. This time, white goods contains washers, dryers, refrigerators, freezers, air conditioners, uh, computer towers. Uh, those are considered white goods, as well as they'll call in. If there's elderly or whatever that can't do it, they call in and the city will pick them up previous, but we'll take them. And they're for free. They can drop them off for free. We're also going to take televisions this time. So we stepped up there, but that's at five bucks a TV. So, but what has happened, and the reason why we've been able to change this plan is the county is actually billing the city. So we don't have to play around with these coupons. We thought we had to play with coupons. It's like, how do you do that? You know, so what it is, is since they're billing the city, we're just going to take cash from the people who want to get rid of the garbage. So they won't have to go get these coupons from anybody. That's the bill. I believe that bill came out to... $153. So that was, that was pretty cheap for the whole East. North of the center ward in Harley, we're hoping you're going to be with us. 
Um, what we do need, though, is on the 19th of July, I believe it's July 19th, we need help distributing flyers to the homes. You know, and what we're doing is we're going home to home, putting it on their doorknob. We can't put it in their mailbox, it's illegal, but we can rubber binder it to their doorknob. And we were just having, we had a little hard time in East where doing that, getting enough volunteers to do that. So if folks would help us out, we're gonna meet at Cary Park. That's where the next collection is gonna be. Um, if folks will meet us there, I believe it was at nine o'clock. Yeah, uh, on that on that mm -hmm. Saturday, and we we're going to distribute the flyers out for the whole North. Part what day did of the you say? Board. Saturday. Today. It would be the ninth Saturday, the nineteenth. The nineteenth is a Tuesday. Oh, it is. Okay. Well, that's not right then. We were figuring Saturday. Saturday, Saturday, Saturday so Sunday. What would that Let be? Sixteenth. Sixteenth. Must be the sixteenth. Sixteenth. Yeah. So any help we can get from anybody, we'd really appreciate. If you know anybody that'd be willing to help. And we thank you all for, for helping us with this and making us a success. And we appreciate your trailer. We're going to really try to fill that sucker up this time. Hopefully we got good weather because we will. I think the weather is what... So now, now you know why Joe is chair. <laughs> thank you, Joe, for, for so giving now, us the full story. Yeah. Moving on to my next one as chairman of the Rec Commission. I commend you for the, the idea of fixing the A Street rink trying to do that for years. Um, I've gone through three administrations up here since I've been on that board. We discuss the problems that are happening with our parks and grounds in committee all the time. Now, if that isn't coming back to you as a full board, I apologize for that. Recently, since your administration, Bob, you've asked for the minutes. I'm hoping you folks are reading those minutes because we include in there the things that need to be fixed in our parks. Um, a Street is one of them that we've been plagued with for many, many years when we were taking care of it. And we knew that that hockey rink is shot. And to keep it in its current location, you're throwing good money away. It needs to be alley. The previous street commissioner, um, actually the previous two, plus the uh, director, I believe, Skullman, have said that the frost, because of the alleyway and it being so close, keeps driving those posts up. It needs to be moved away. As long as a front end loader goes through there to plow it, and as long as cars are going through there, it's going to drive the frost, it's going to push the posts. I've always said this thing needs to be pushed back at least 20 feet away from the alley. Going to rebuild this thing, please consider relocating it and not in the same spot so you don't continue to have that problem. Anyway. I think there's two schools of thought there. Uh, one is that the uh, um, they have not been putting the posts down uh, below the frost line, and so that's why they continue to come up. And so if we have longer posts and drive them down further, they believe that they will stay there. So that was from both Gary Skullman and Dennis Johnson. So I think we probably will not move it, uh, but we'll take and try to drive the posts down even further. With a Some guys said to move it away from there. And I know that Steve Johnson, when he was City Street Commissioner. And Ted's the Street Commissioner now, and I'm sure he'll do it the best way it's going to get done, and he'll know what to do. Good point, though. We need to be aware. Yes, Ted. Um, and then to discuss two years ago, we came to the rec, Parks and Rec, and Pete, I believe you were the chairman at that time, and we had discussed the A Street Rank. We also talked about Cary Park. Um, at that time, we had to close Cary Park once because it had a hole in the fiberglass that was about the size of a watermelon. And if a child would have caught his face on that, it would have ripped his face right off. We closed it. Two days later, Kelly Myers went down there and put a great big fiberglass patch on it to fix that. The rink is, is, is just about shot. 
You know, when we talked about it then, the city had said that they would go down there and they would reface it with plywood, with treated plywood and stabilize it. That's never happened. Now the doors on there are jimmy rigged to stay on. They're shot, they're falling off, they're doing whatever they can to make this thing work. But it's, it's, it's done, it, it's gone through its life cycle. And I've had the rec director has gone out and gotten bids to replace that rink and I believe the about it at the rec commission. I think it was like 26. It's that ring. So if you're talking about budgeting and replacing that one needs to go. It needs to be fixed. Ball fields. The ball fields out there need to be resurfaced. And there's dips in them, and people are tripping when they're playing softball out there. We've talked about this for a number of years. I don't know of anybody who knows how to do a ball field. I don't know if you got to hire somebody who does that type of installation, or, but there's nobody up here who's been able to figure out how to fix it. Right. Uh, the back fences are lifting. We've put rubber underneath them to try to keep the balls in so that they don't go underneath the fence and fly away. I haven't been there this year. Brian, you've played. I don't know how things are going there this year. Our softball goes, uh, fields are in pretty darn good shape. Um, the ring now because the set the legislature and out of session if they do call a special session there's going to be some money for outer cities for skating rinks and upgrades to rinks we're waiting to find out if that's going to happen we'd like to put in a grant with them and replace the cooling system at Cary Park. Um, Bill's had bids upwards of $220,000 to replace that. The city's gonna have to do it by 2025 because of the coolant that's in it. If we can get a break through this grant, and we're hoping that they would give us at least 50% of the cost to replacement right now, we would need the city to come up with the other 50%. 110000 110,000 now, but if you wait until 2002 or 2022 when the R33 that you get right now turns to gold because it's no longer any good and it's going to be sold, you'll be able to still get the refrigerant up to 2025, but you're going to pay a price. And then come 2025 when everybody's got to replace their coolant systems, now you're probably going to pay upwards of 400,000. Lung and, and push the can down the road, or do you go and get it while everybody's not doing it because they're thinking, I'm going to do this cheap right now, where you can get it. I think it doesn't appear very likely that there'll be a, a special session, and so uh, we'll have to wait and see what happens in the next session with regard to the Mighty Ducks uh, monies. It's, the Mighty Ducks thing is, is that something that the city would want us to pursue? Absolutely. Absolutely. Any, any grant. And us to replace the coolant is the city. Well, we're going to have to come up with it. Doesn't make financial sense not to. And that's something that the Rec Commission bill is going to have to work together with Ted as who is actually in charge of the building and work together on that. Do you have something?
Ours is a closed system, so our refrigerant actually doesn't go up. Plugging into the rink is the glycol. Uh, refrigerant out in there, actually under. following Europe, and Europe is I think we're, we're into kind of committee planning here, so I'd suggest that we bring this to committees and uh, there. Just bringing this up, because I just want to make sure that, that the whole council is aware of this stuff, that it's just not going by the wayside. Everybody hears what we're saying. That guy on that one, people thought we were just out to kill it and, and destroy it. It's not what our plan ever was, nor did we ever want to do that. Are here we go through the same things board we talk about spending money and I hear three city councilors saying there's no money there's no money what is our first person our point to go any further it needs to be brought to the budget and planning committee I mean if you have a, a list of things that need to be done it would behoove the rec commission to bring that to the uh, budget and finance committee as we're doing our, our budgeting for next year and I think that you have a strong case for a lot of stuff so I mean as we get into the budget and finance and we start looking at the public works I would highly suggest the rec department put in requests for upgrades for whatever documented you have that you need and prioritize what you'd like to see first and what and the importance of it that would be my, my suggestion Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Anything further to come before the council? Next meeting is Monday, July the 18th at 4.30. Stand adjourned. Thank you. Thank you.